What's up, guys? So this is the first trial run of this. We'll see how this works. Um, so yeah. We're going to build a nice rod. Um, it's a little shorty that I, I build. I got a couple more I got to get built up. They've been laying around, so I figured I'd build one tonight. Um, going to show you how we do it, uh, or at least how I do it. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask questions. Um, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, if this keeps going well and guys show up for these, I'll probably bring these over to Twitch so it's a little more interactive. It is really distracting watching myself in delay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we need a couple things situated here. Feel free to ask questions, guys. Throughout the night, I will do my best to answer them, even if they're non-rod building. Mike's a little hot. Okay, I can turn it down a bit. Thanks, Scott. Let me know if that's a little better. Get the mic a bit closer than I normally do. So. It's a little different than doing a YouTube video just being live, so bear with me, guys. You guys get to be the first witnesses of this whole deal. If it goes well, I'll do a lot more of them, um, especially during the off-season from open water. I'll try to do more things. So, good, Mike, good, guys. Video, it is what it is. There is webcam, so might get interrupted by a few beagles every now and again. So... Alrighty, so one of the first things I do like to start out with is kind of test fitting everything um, and building up the handles. I did this in advance. Um, they're uh, extreme HWI cork. I think it's like five and a half inches, just the basic cork, and I've actually cut the corkalon end off of it here and then cut off about I think it was about an inch inch and a half and then I re-glued it in um, all you actually use for cork to glue the rings and the pieces together is wood glue uh, really simple to do uh, I did leave the plastic on there why I was uh, working on different things uh, just keep it nice and neat and clean uh, so what exactly are you building for a rod? Ice rod, Dave. What do you think? Uh, it's a little short rod. Um, it's my sight fishing rod that I build, and it does fit inside of a five-gallon bucket as well. Uh, so it's kind of kind of cool little rod. Um, I generally put our Tightline Pro or our, our Sideline Pro um, on this guy. So and I did forget masking tape, so we'll see how far I can get before I got to grab it somewhere in the house so <clears throat> if you look really closely on the blank here uh, you'll see some white marks on it and what those are are my guide spacing and where I'm going to place them and, I'm, and I've also went and spined the blank and I'm probably going to do a video kind of explaining everything step by step a little bit better detail if you have questions just jump in and let me know um, but basically how you spine a rod is you're gonna basically rest the tip of the blank against your hand and just roll it and what you're gonna try to find is an area where the rod jumps and it just wants to sit and this particular rod it's right here so I already marked everything on it the way I wanted it to be so that's one of the most critical steps when building any rod, open water or sight fishing, uh, ice rods or ice rods in general. You need to make sure that you do that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's get into what I'm going to put on it. Um, what I actually have here is a just a stainless steel uh, fly style tip top. It is a number six, it's a 1.2 millimeter tube. So 
Um, we'll be putting that in a tip. And then for my guides, because this is a Sidewinder or like a schoolie style reel, I'm going to be using really small uh, single foot wire guides on this. Um, it's going to keep the overall weight of the blank really, really low. Um, I got number eight, number seven, and there's going to be two number sixes towards the end, and then the tip top. So we're going to go ahead and start building that up, uh, kind of mocking it up, wrapping the guides on, um, test fitting it, testing the rod, make sure we like how it bends and flex with the guide placement. So we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and get wrapping some guides here for you guys. And we're going to put a hook keeper on this as well. Um, a little wire one that I have that I use quite often and I'm going to start with that first and what I like to do is kind of slide the handle on so I know where it's going to be let's get the hook keeper out let me know if that music in the background is too loud guys I can turn her off all together so if I need be but how I'm gonna set up um, this hook keeper is I actually want it to hide down in there but also leave enough room for the winding check and I have a bag of those right here these are the three millimeter HWI uh, winding checks that I'm gonna be using So one thing that I like to do on all the builds is make sure that I test fit them. Uh, every single part of it. Um, Deepar, the raft has been doing pretty good from what I heard. Still sounds like Metro. Um, day sale has been still the hottest place to get a good variety of fish. Perch, bluegill, uh, crappie, um, walleye. It was really good. I heard from Eric Lentz tonight. He sent me a message said he lit them up. I know he launched out of Crocker, uh, but he did have machines, so he probably perused somewhere out deep. Not exactly sure where. Um, I'm sure he'll post up tonight on his Facebook page or one of the groups of what he got. So, so I got the hook keeper in place just to, to test fit it, and I am going to wrap this in. I just want to make sure I liked where it was at in relation to the handle. And I do like it where it's at. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off. And we're going to start wrapping some, some of this up here. It's probably been a year since I actually sat down and built a rod from start to finish. So I might fumble and bumble through a couple steps here and there. Just bear with me on that. But... All right. I need to set up for a few rod repairs I was doing in the fall for some guys. There we go. And if you're wondering why the music is some nondescript, weird, domain-free music, it's because YouTube doesn't like it when you use copyrighted stuff. So that's why I'm using free-to-use music in the background, just trying to bear with it. So... So generally how I start these is I'll wrap one side of the main thread coming off of here and then I will actually jump the other side of it. That way it's kind of started. 
and just kind of wrap back behind it so that it catches when I start the wraps here. So we're just going to go ahead and start it up. I got way too much to mess with there. Let's back some of this off. Show you guys a quick little tip too. Um, if you're trying to put guides on, and like I did right now, I actually forgot the masking tape. What you can actually do is heat up your guide and run it across your tip top hot glue and basically stick it onto the blank where you want it. And it'll still pop off fairly easily if you ever need to take it off. It's just hot glue, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on that. And then I can place it where I want it. Now let me not have to worry about holding it so much while I'm building. I'm not so worried about how good and nice these wraps down underneath are going to look because it's actually going to be hidden underneath the uh, handle. Uh, but I do want to get this hook keeper nice and flat down here. Let me know if I should put a third camera up on this and have my fish tank back behind me showing. I got some pretty cool fish in there. So I got that wrapped all the way down the way I want it. Um, and the next step is to actually pull the thread through. And I'm going to use some of this copper colored thread for this. You can use monofilament if you want um, to do this part. This is just how you finish the wraps when you're doing these. Take a piece of it, double it up, and you make sure you got a loop. I'll figure out which side the camera's on. So make sure you make a loop, and you're going to push it right up up against your last wrap and you're going to continue your wrap down the rest of the way at least three or four times I try to at least um, and then once you get that done you're actually going to hold that in place go ahead and trim it and then you're going to take the tag inch you got and you're going to put it through the loop like so, and grab the two tag ends of the loop that you made and pull it back up underneath the threading. I'll take this off and show you guys really quick what that ends up looking like. Um, if I can get it to focus on it. Um, but it's actually wrapped up underneath the other one there. And that is a complete wrap on the hook keeper. Just gonna trim off the excess, and then that is your hook keeper done. So that's the first thing I like to do um, on mine. Some guys do it last. Some guys do it whenever it works for them. Doesn't really matter. 
There's no wrong way of doing it as long as the rod functions the way the rods are supposed to function and you use the proper epoxies and glues. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to be putting on the number eight guide. Um, so for that, bust those guys out. Um, one thing to remember too on every guide that you buy, doesn't matter if it's for an open water rod or an ice fishing rod, take a little hand file and actually file the foot of the guide. Um, a lot of times the, uh, the very, very toe end of the foot is a little sharp of an angle and it's hard to get a wrap to go over it. So what I like to do is actually just grind it down uh, both directions so that when I wrap the thread up it, um, it's nice and clean looking. So it's been a while since I looked at these, so I'm not sure which ones are the good ones and the bad ones here. Yeah, it's gonna be the best one to use. Okay, again, I'm gonna use the glue um, you can use masking tape to hold these in place too, that works. Just keep in mind too that if you're not really good at lining these up, that these are probably going to be a little misaligned. But I just want just enough glue on here that it's tacky so I don't have to try to hold things with three hands. Oh, this music is killing me. I'm sorry, guys. Especially that song. Let me find some different stuff. Feel free to ask questions, guys. Try to answer them. Watching someone build an ice rod is really not the most exciting thing in the world, especially when you're watching it real time. That's not a super fast process. That I know. Already been on 30 minutes and I've only got this far, so definitely going slower than I normally do. Let's we'll see if we can pick up the pace here a bit for you guys. I clean a little bit of this up. Okay. If you're wondering why I'm putting these black bands over top of the blank, um, that is so that I have a little bit of tension on the blank, and when I want to let go of it, when I have the thread wrapped on it, it doesn't pull back and reverse everything I just got done doing. Not a fun way to uh, get frustrated. Okay, so when you're starting your guide wraps, you actually want to start a little bit below it, right on the blank. Hey Tony, your uh, message got 
censored, so I went ahead and showed it anyways. Yeah, it's called Domain Free Music, man. You're stuck with it, you know? YouTube doesn't like it when you use copyrighted stuff. That's not free for use, and... This guy is out of Minnesota. Pretty cool guy. Lots YouTubers use his music freely, so... Don't have much of a choice. So we're going to start the wraps. And we're just going to keep them nice and tight and work our way up. Onto the guide. And trim off that tag in now that I got it bit in. We're going to wrap around it. If you notice what I just did right there, I actually broke free the guide so that later on, when I need to adjust the guides to line it up, I can do so. Man, I feel like I'm getting old. It's getting hard to see some of this stuff. Um, Deep R, I really don't know what blank this is. Um... I know that you can take our 32 inch glass and trim it down and literally get the same exact dimensions out of it. Um, you just gotta take a little bit off the tip and a little off the butt section to get it. Um, just a, what they would call a toothpick blank that I, I've had laying around forever. Um, it's the blank I like to use. I've been trying to get John to actually make this blank again because I don't know if it's made anymore. And have them make it up for you guys. I know we have had guys ask for sight fishing blanks and stuff in the past. So, so again, I got my copper line or my copper thread in there, uh, so I can pull my tag line through and up underneath the other threads. So we're gonna put our thumb in place, cut it, and you're gonna bring it up through the loop. Grab the two ends of the copper. If everything goes smoothly, it comes through with the tag in. Every once in a while, get the wraps a little tight and it fights me a bit. But got that in there. We're going to trim the tag in just like that. Don't worry about if there's a little bit left over. I'll show you at the end how we actually rectify that and get rid of that little burr that's on there so that's the first guide now we're going on to the second guide which is going to be right here um, that's actually going to be a number seven um if i remember right tony it is pretty similar to doing that that serving line on a bowstring just kind of wrap it nice and tight um you don't want to have it super super tight though on the blank um, especially with, with open water rods and rods that have bigger guides, you can actually have a slight issue with like burrs and that going in the blank. And if it's too tight, it'll actually start wearing in the blank and you're going to have a failure there. Um, so that's not good. And also it makes it harder to adjust your guides when you're trying to realign them so that they're all lined up on the spine from tip all the way down to your last, to your first guide. My wife just texted me one second, guys. She's got a bunch of people she works with that are fans of my channel. And they're on their lunch break, so I'm sure they'll pop in here and watch it. So, now it's for the number seven guide. So, a little bit of alignment here on the stand just to get everything from getting messed up. Same thing like I did in number eight. We're gonna put a little bit of the hot glue on the foot. Um, this is my way of doing it. You don't have to do it this way. You can use masking tape, uh, brace bands, you know, for from your kids' braces. That works too. Stick that on there. The goal of this is just to kind of sit there, not really to bond with the blank. So 
if you guys are ever wondering when you take rods in to get repaired the process that we do this is half of the process the other half is we literally have to take a flat single edge uh, like a, a, a razor blade and actually clean off the epoxy clean off the thread take the guide off clean up all that which could take can take some some time to do um, depending on the epoxy used by the company uh, the thread wrap that was used um, if it's a double foot single foot all that stuff and you gotta be really careful when you do that because you can actually cut into the blank if you're not careful and that will cause a failure in the rod and that is not good when you're doing a repair for somebody to have their rod fail because you cut into the blank so we're going to repeat the same step that we did here so we're going to start our wraps I usually go two down and then go one over top of it kind of lock it in there and kind of crisscross it again it's a little fills it up a little big but I like that I can basically start my wrap almost every time and it stays put with minimal work so uh, the stuff I got here is a pretty white it's a tip top glue Tony um, that you can get at the shop um, I got a Mondo size one I think the ones we got in the shop right now are like I don't know, about an inch, inch and a half. A little goes a long ways. I got a couple of big sticks just because I was doing so many repairs um, last year at home on top of at the shop. Just was easier to have some here. So this is a little bit of a funky guide, but we're demoing tonight. I'm not going to worry too much about it looking amazingly perfect or anything like that because normally I'd actually file this guy a little more. Uh, but we're just going to slap around there. So you guys are not sitting here watching me build a rod for four hours. So. Back this off a little bit because it's getting a little tight. Yeah. Um, Scott, the reason why I learned how to make rods is because I broke so many rods. When I was fishing the trap tacks. Tony, you might remember those. The good old... Cabela days when we both worked down at the Dundee store. Get my wraps. Oh, that's not good. So that was what we call a fail. This is where it gets interesting. It's pulling the loop through and the one slid through. So now I'm going to have to wrap this by hand. Or restart. One of the two. Really trying not to have to restart. Nope, not going to have to. Awesome. And Pat, how many thousands of night crawlers do you think we, we cleaned and packed at that place, man? It was a lot. And I think I'm still packing out bait to this day. Since I was 16 years old, I've been packing bait. Miner, thinking about going fishing on Lake Sinclair Sunday. Do you think it'll be safe? Well, being that the lake is literally got a foot of ice or more, um, you should be all right. Anywhere that there's current, you definitely want to use caution. Um, those areas can get tricky when the when you get a, like a little bit of thaw, a little warm up. So, if you do go out, be cautious. No matter where you go, it's always a good idea. We're going to do the next two guides, which are actually the same size. 
And I might need to go grab a file really quick. Because these are a little gnarly. Let me go grab a file really quick. I'm just going to grab a nail file. It should be enough to do what I need to do. Oh, this could be bad. You can use a uh, nail file for your hand. See if they can actually get this cleaned up. I did not do this bag of guides. I thought I did. This thing is so small. Right back guys, this is not working. I'm gonna grab a power tool. Speed this up a bit. This is not for everyone. We're going to use power to do this. Got to watch your fingers. Definitely could end badly for not watching what you're doing. Wouldn't that make for a good clip on YouTube? Me blasting my fingers with a cutting disc. Good old Dremel tool, man. Good for everything. Feeling like Tim Allen right now. I'm just not wanting to mess around with it by hand. Mike hates that tool. Dude, my ears hate that tool, but it does wonders. Gotta love the good old Dremel, man. Good for everything. Um, quick tip, though. If you're going to use a Dremel disc to actually file down your guides, be very, very careful, with, especially the wire ones, where they're brazed together. Um, you can actually overheat it, and then that brazing can fail, and it'll come apart on you. And you just fried that guide, and it's no longer good. So... Take the ring off there. Sorry, buddy. Gotta take the ring off. It's starting to bother me a bit. Alrighty, next guide. So we got two more to go on here. 
before we get to the tip top, then we'll go over epoxies. I gotta kind of clear the work area here once I get to that point, and I'm gonna put it up on the dryer and uh, go through the epoxy process. And basically, it sits for 24 hours after that, and she's done. So, next guide. Sometimes these last couple ones can be an absolute nightmare to do because um, the blank is so thin it just absolutely hates you um, but known to pull out a fly fly fishing bobbin that you actually fly tie with and um, basically finish it up I have no idea where mine is tonight so we're gonna suffer through this if it gets frustrating tried to get Pasco to come do a live stream with me but he's like no I don't want to do that I know he hops on his Facebook page every now and again and actually pours jigs and stuff and lead weights for uh, Pasco tackle his little terminal tackle company that he runs we do carry his stuff in the store too look here at my alignment to see how screwed up I might be. Not too bad. Just checking the alignment, make sure my guides are fairly close when I do these wraps. I'm not having to mess with them too much. Try to build my my rods as perfect as possible out the gate. You can see um, the tip is basically underneath that band. That next guide's got to go right there. So this is where it gets a little interesting. I'm trying to finish these up. It gets a little tight quarters. I don't know why some people use bobbins, especially in the last one. So we're going to repeat the same process here. Would you guys like me to do a video kind of like step by step and in instructional type of this as well? Um, let me know in the comment, or the chat or whatever. Um, I could probably bang one of those out this weekend maybe if everything goes well timing wise with things with the dogs and the wife and cleaning up the house. All that good stuff that we have to do in the winter time so we get free days. Uh, Matt, this is just an old blank I had laying around. I have no idea where I got it. I, I use it for my sight rods. Um, been trying to get John to make it. Maybe he's he's checking in tonight, and maybe he will make it in the near future. Maybe who knows? That would be awesome. This is one of my favorite blanks, but there is nowhere to get them anymore. So. God, I didn't see your message, man. Why'd you take it down? I feel like I missed something. What did I miss? Bed, bath, and beyond. Are you talking about the wife stuff? <laughs> uh, I don't think that's on the to do list this weekend, actually. She works Saturday. And usually when she works six days a week, 
to try to help out the house do laundry or start it at least start it like sort it or something bed bath and beyond is life come on if you're married you know what I mean by that it is totally life so we got that guy done um, got one more to go and this is the one I absolutely hate doing Um, Stringer, or, uh, Matthew, on this particular blank, I use our Sidewinder Pro. Let me pull up the website on that OBS, and I'll show you guys the reel that I actually use on this combo. So you can pick it up over at sportsmansdirect.com. If you know who I am, you good chance you already knew that, though. And I use the Pro. Um, I'm not a big fan of schoolies, but I do like this reel. Um, it's got a pretty good drag on it. I actually got a video on YouTube. Um, that I put on actually on this channel for it. Let's see if I can get the window to capture here. Window capture store. So that is the reel that I use guys on this particular rod it's a Sidewinder Pro um, you can pick it up over at sportsmansdirect.com um, just hop on there and put Sidewinder in and you'll get the Pro and the standard in um, you can pop on the quick video or kind of explain it if you guys want um, Turn some music off here so I don't have any feedback from it. Why won't it shut up? Pause, close. There we go. This way, you guys can hear the video. Um, we released the Sidewinder Pro back in 2015. Wow, um, it's in the Ice Hopper lineup. Actually, it's Mike that talks on the video. That's right. I forgot. So. There we go. Look at that fanciness. The Sidewinder Pro from Ice Hopper is a featherweight side mounted grill that weighs 1.8 ounces and has a removable line guide. 60 millimeter graphite spool is supported by a metal shaft that spins on a unidirectional bearing. Its adjustable multi disc drag system lets you handle those larger fish without the fear of spool warpage like other side mounted reels on the market today. It comes in both right and left handed models, and this is the new 2016 Sidewinder Pro from Ice Hopper. So, that is the reel that I use on this particular rod. Um... Scott, you probably know this next reel that I like to use, and I use this on most of my other deep water panfish rods, um, and that is the Extreme uh, 2.0 to be exact, and if you were a fan of the old one that had the double handle, we do have the handle for sale by itself now, um, so you can buy that and switch it out if you wanted to. Um, but the nice thing with the Tightline Extreme is that we were actually the first ones to offer a geared uh, fly reel that didn't have free spool. Um, and it's a graphite frame reel. Metal reels tend to get pretty cold when you're fishing with them without gloves. So that's why we tend to use those. Um, but yeah, the Sidewinder Pro, 
and that reel there, the Tightline Extreme, are my two favorite that I fish with the most. Um, for Northern Pike, Lakers, and big stuff, I use a spinning reel um, for that. After. So, those are the two reels that I primarily use for panfish. Hope that helps you guys out at all. So, take that off of there now. Let's get back to wrapping this rod up. Got the last guide, my least favorite guide to do. One I struggle with no matter how many rods I build. This is still my most hated guide to do. Um, especially on ice rods. Because the blank has very little strength to it right there. And it just is so flimsy and flexible. Just likes to fight you the whole way. So... I'm acing it tonight, guys. That was probably the best one I've done in ages. The store is Sportsman's Direct. It's not my store. I actually work there. Um, John Baccarella is the owner. He just pays me to buy, buy cool tackle for you guys, um, help you out in the store, do some videos, kind of educate you guys on products that we do and, and on the fishing in the area. Um, just kind of try to make this as fun as possible for you guys, you know, get you cool products. It is definitely a dream job in a way. Um, I enjoy it, but it's like any job, it's a job. It is still that dreaded three letter word that we, none of us want to have to deal with, but we have to, to have the nice things we want in life, i.e., that nice new shiny ranger bass boat i got in the driveway that is doing absolutely nothing but sitting right now and all i want to do is go drive around at 60 miles an hour because it's fun i have used the tightline pro matt um It is, it is a cool little reel. Um, I've actually used it for jigging open water species, like walleye. Um, it is similar to the free fall, but it's not the same deal. Um, in the sense that there's no tension adjustment for the, for the, free, for the free spool feature on it. We really don't call it a, a free spool reel um, intentionally in the description of it. One second here, this is going to be a bit of a cluster. Um, but it is cool. I got a cool video of John actually um, pink salmon fishing with it up at Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, was it last year? Well, it's 2017, so it's been 2016 when he was uh, pink salmon fishing with it. Him and his son went up to Sault Ste. Marie. And I am planning on going up there this year. Uh, do a little fishing. Sounds like the wife and I are going to go up. Since that is my birthday, that time of the year. Make that my birthday trip. 
Uh, me and her go up, maybe spend two, three days up there catching some pink salmon. And no pun intended, guys. Nice try. I know some of you were thinking it. Yeah, Scott, you, how many of those do you have now? I think I've shipped you a couple of them. I mean, I'm a little weird when it comes to, like, the whole free spool thing. I gotta fix that one. Uh, and ice fishing, it's not my... I don't... I, not my thing, so... But that's why there's so many different options out there for everybody to pick and choose what suits their needs, their style. Um, we got to fix this one. Came undone on me. Bonus guide wrapping. You get to do another one twice. Yes, you do. I don't know what the exact count is. You order so often, though. Did you ever get a chance to use any of those bandits you bought up at the end of the year? That smoking eight ninety nine deal or whatever it was. Or is that just a stocking up deal for you? Now I get why some of these Twitch streamers, you know, the gamers that stream. Like how it feels awkward when there's silence. When you know there's people watching, you're like, they're waiting for you to talk. But you're like, I don't know what to say. Feels so awkward at times. But it's alright. It's kinda like doing a seminar, just get up there and talk and hope people like to hear what you're talking about. Golden roll, get a crank pit every time. Have fun, Kyle. <laughs> Enjoy. I do not blame you. Never pass that up. Those of us who are married, we get that never turn it down, ever. I can always break the silence by singing. I am like the worst singer in the world. I'd rather play some crappy music that's free to use than me sing. I really wish I could play like normal music and not get dinged by freaking YouTube. It'd be nice. But I don't want that. Why are you surprised this rod has an orange tip? And I'll tell you why it has an orange tip. After you, or tell me why you're surprised it has an orange tip.
Yep, it is a sight fishing rod. See, I told you, Team Jesus Outdoors. I think I know who that is. Um, oh, wow, I'm drawing a blank. Hold on. I got this. I know who this is. Don't hate me. It's been a long week. It's John Carter, isn't it? Um, yeah, I actually am going to make some upgrades if money allows. Um, I know I want to add some lights to it. I got it right, John. I, I Just give me a second to remember who it was. I recognize the name, though. How's your channel going now, Ben? How many subscribers are you up to now? I'm plugging away. So... Hey, all the guides are on. Okay. All right, so we're going to move the rad wrapper out of the way for the next part. It's in the way. Next is the tip top. I do want to change the electronics on the boat. I got an HDS7 Gen 3 touch on the bow or uh, at the console, and I got a hook 5 or 7 um, at the bow. They're not, not workable, so that kind of bugs me a bit. So, next thing up, we're going to do the tip top. So, keep an eye on the Facebook page. I might actually put that up for sale um, and sell them off. So, if you're a Lawrence fan, you can get you a couple units maybe with a decent price on them. And I might even leave my waypoints from St. Clair in there for you guys. Not like I have too many in there. Um, didn't have tons and tons of time last year in it. In the books, I got it, I think it was what, August when I got it. End of, end of July, first part of um, maybe mid-August. I'm not going to do 12s, John. Um, I'm thinking 9s. The 9 is a massive, massive housing, the same as the 10. And even though I'm getting old, I really don't like the idea of having that much money sitting in electronics on my boat. So, and I say that, but yet, you know, I got a $30,000 plus aluminum bass boat. Yeah, I was planning on doing helixes. I'm a hummingbird guy. I've always had birds growing up when I lived on the Erie. Um, we always had them on our boats. Even when I was first mating in that, we had birds on all the boats. So I do really want the mega um, side imaging though. So, um, But Scott, going back to your sight fishing thing, the reason I have an orange tip, and I know some people are thinking, well, the fish can see it, the fish can see it. Yeah, they probably can, but I also got really tired of breaking tip tops in my shanty. Um, so, and the reason I would break them is the handles on my reels would turn, and lo and behold, the tip would bend over too far and it would snap the rod and I got really tired of it just go big the nines are big enough man I'm I, I'm I would be satisfied with that so line up those guides what do you guys think Let's see if I can get that just right does that look straight 
I think it's pretty dang straight. Got one that might be off a little smidge. This back one here. So yeah, there's that. Let's put the winding check back up and on. I'm probably gonna need to run down to the basement to get the masking tape for one of the last steps on this here rod and that is getting the handle attached to the blank so I will be right back in about 30 seconds And I'm back. Yes, I own an FL18. I've had it for a very, very, very long time. I absolutely love flashers for ice fishing. Um, I have been known to drive home three hours after forgetting it before I went fishing. <laughs> Didn't come back and get it and then go back fishing. So, all right. Check everything really quick, make sure we're on spine. Feels pretty good. It's not wanting to roll over on me, so it's good. So what the masking tape is. Uh, I'm just using a really old school blank. I, ha I had a bunch of these laying around. Um not sure of the brand on it honestly i've been trying to get john the owner to make these again um maybe he will one day it's a really cool blank i do i do plan on doing another one of these guys um waiting on the split grip handles to come back in and what i'll do is i'll build up a split grip rod on one of our extreme taper rods and show you guys how to use the accent pieces and everything that we sell which I think would be pretty cool for you guys that are wanting to build them uh, if you are needing rod building components especially for ice rods uh, sportsmansdirect.com is definitely one of the best places to get the stuff not the only place but definitely one of the best places uh, we supply a lot of the custom rod builders that you see on Facebook some of the smaller guys uh, you see them advertising online um, we actually supply many 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 of them with blanks and I am not gonna tell you which companies they are guys because that just wouldn't be right but we do supply a lot of them so remember earlier when I was telling you about little burrs and little fuzzies um, a lot of denature alcohol I normally would do that, but I'm going to do it with the lighter. This is just a nylon thread, so it's going to melt and basically cleans it up and pulls it tight. Gets rid of the fuzzies on the thread. And the reason you want to do that is if you don't do that, it's actually going to show through on the epoxy. And we don't want that. We want it to look nice and neat. And we epoxy the rod so did that really quick so that's done um, so now we're gonna do the handle epoxy I use pro paste 
hopefully this is still good just part a part b uh the resin felt a little hard earlier so we're gonna see if we can get it to work with us a little bit the flatline 2 is a really good uh panfish rod mat um it's different than a lot of things that are out there um the original flatline was definitely a uh, very very stiff rod um, but the two a little more refined uh, it's a really nice rod um, it's kind of like that spring bobber kind of deal you know built-in spring bobber deal um, but yeah it's a lot of fun we do offer those blanks by themselves if you guys want to build on them. Just keep in mind you don't use a normal tip top with those. You actually just use a guide on the end for the tip top. Um, I think this jar of pro paste might have gone bad on me. But we'll see if I can get enough good stuff out of it to make up enough glue for the handle. Yep, coming together just fine. I know it got a little hard. Yeah, the extreme taper rods are absolutely awesome. Um, I don't want this to come across wrong, Matt, but the tickle stick is like the flat line. Um, we actually were the first ones to have that blank design and technology on the u.s market um basically a whole year before their rod was even shown or whole season before their rod was even shown the dealers um so <clears throat> maybe we came across the same same technology same time kind of deal probably what happened um because a lot of those factories over there shop companies of all sizes and like 13 we thought it was a good idea offered some variety to the market it fits a niche which we like to mess around with niches help guys out they're just trying to look for a certain thing um, but the flatline 2 and the tickle stick do, does have some similarities to it I know we have less guides on the tip of ours um, that actually is a pretty big deal because you just don't need that much weight out on the end of that rod. Um, and if you were to buy the blanks, you can actually sand and change that tip and basically turn it into a really good uh, spring bobber. I need to make a video of me using this rod out there. Hopefully, um, it's starting to kind of calm down just enough that we're not totally crazy exhausted that you know i actually kind of want to go fishing tomorrow but none of my stuff is ready and i got to get a lot of stuff out of the bed of my truck so i can actually move my shanty and actually get it out in the lake in that because i got just too much stuff in the back of my in my bed right now so all right so the, the pro pace is mixed up pretty good so we got a couple hard spots in it but it is good enough for government work and union work so so what we do with this is I actually put it on the very end of the rod. And what differs for ice rods versus open water is that you can actually do the handle buildup if you're doing a Tennessee style grip and the guides and everything in the same, same setting basically. If you're doing open water rods, you really can't do that. You have to do the, the handle build up a whole day prior let it set up then wrap your guides um, because of the taper and how big the blank is you have to do the handle first and everything actually goes this way down onto it but on ice rods 
we're lucky that we can actually uh, do it backwards. If you notice, I'm actually rotating this as I'm going up on the blank. And that's just making sure that I get really good coverage inside the cork as I go up. Masking tape is just acting as a spacer. So I got a little bit of build up right here. So I'm going to thin it out a bit. Kind of move it up on the masking a bit. Like so. Get a little more there. We're going to continue to thread that on up all the way until she stops. And just before we get to where it bottoms out, I'm going to take my little spatula and I'm going to clean this off just a little bit. I do that just so I have a nice clean finish on it. Okay, so the handle's now attached. This is the winding check. I'm gonna thread that, push that back down. Next, I'm gonna get a little more of the pro paste back behind that. Um, just so it kind of holds that winding check in place. Just something I like to do. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but it's just uh, what I do. Um, with it so we'll slide that on down get it positioned where I like it again take the spatula and just clean up the top of the cork like so one reason why I like using Tennessee handles versus a real seat is that you don't have to worry about the real seat being lined up with the spine of the rod, which if you're here at the start, I kind of explained that a little bit. Um, there's a lot of good good videos on YouTube already about finding a spine from a lot of good rod builders. Um, we actually got a seminar where John talked about it at length, um, the way he likes to build his rods. Um, he's got some pretty cool techniques if you don't have one of the hand wrappers like I have um, He actually shows how to use use your legs and your knees to actually wrap um, I'm not gonna try to master it that way. It's his deal It works for him. The end result is a good finished rod and that's all that matters When you're doing these ice rods are probably the easiest thing to learn to do open water rods have a little more of a learning curve um, a lot less margin of error on it. So that is the glue for the handle. I'm just gonna set that there. Next, I'm gonna get the uh, rod dryer set up so I can show you guys how we actually finish off the guides, um, which is pretty straightforward. It's just putting some slow cure epoxy on it. Um, make sure everything is nice and liquidy here. Yep, we should be good. Let's wrap that up. And the reason I use aluminum foil for that pro paste, um, I don't have any paper or anything like that that gets stuck on. Plastic works okay too, uh, but foil's cheap. You're gonna throw away all the rest of it anyway, so no big deal. Keeps it from getting all over the place. Alrighty, grab my mixing cups. Right here. Now, if you come in the store or go online, these little mixing cups actually have measurements on it. Um, this is the Pro Coat Medium Build from uh, what was it? Yeah, Pro Coat actually. Um, when you're using the rod thread epoxies, you need to make sure you mix equal parts. Um, you can get these little syringes to do it. Or you can just pour it in and use the lines on here and make sure you do equal parts. Um, what I found with the Pro Coat, at least for me, as long as you got the right temp, if you do a half teaspoon of each part, you'll get plenty of mixing. Um, especially for this ride, you got enough enough material left over uh, that you'll have enough to actually do all the threads in that. Um, but it's just enough of the epoxy that you're not wasting so much and you still get a good solid mix out of it um, You do got to mix it for about three minutes 
So we're gonna go ahead and do that part. Let me grab my motors. Let me get those set up really quick, so bear with me. We'll get those going for you. Uh, you can get the Pro Coat on our website or in the store. We got it in little single serve um, packs for you guys if you wanted. To just do one ride, you don't want to invest in a whole bunch of it. Uh, so let me grab my motors. Come here. Come here. Come here, puppy. Come here, puppy. Oh. Hey, Finny, say hello to the internet, buddy. This is my pup. Finn. Came in and say hi. Hmm? Alrighty. Motor is working, all right. I'll show that here in a little bit, Matt. Um, hey, Rock, what kit, what kit did you end up getting? Did you get one of the model kits? Or did you part your uh, guides and rod and blank and all that together yourself? Just kind of curious. Even though I work for Sportsman's Direct, I do not hate on Mudhole. They have some cool stuff. And they're a good source of information if you ever guys ever need it to. If you can't get a hold of us, we can. They're never bad to go talk to them either. So we'll grab paper towel really quick for open these. <clears throat> Start the rotating process. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to mix equal parts of this Pro Coat. Nothing wrong with Mud Hole Rock. Nothing wrong at all. Good source for stuff. Okay. So when you go to put this in here, make sure that your cup is clean. I usually like to blow, make sure I got no dust in there. No pet hair, since I have a cat and two dogs here. Definitely a real issue here. We're going to put a half teaspoon in here. I know a lot of guys that come in the store that are interested in rod building, like, they're really intimidated by it, and I get it. Um, but it's really not a hard process to do. It is time consuming, though. So it's something you do want to take your time. If you're not somebody that can do tedious stuff and stay focused for a little bit, this may not be your hobby. Um, but it is pretty rewarding, you know, building up rods and catching them on rods that you actually built. So. I learned how to do it more out of necessity. Um, I was breaking rods when I fished on the tournament trail, the trap attacks too often, um, just because I was being in a hurry. You know, didn't give a crap about breaking stuff. It was all about trying to catch those one pound panfish when I was out there, so.
Yeah. One thing I will tell you, Rock, um, when you're first starting out, be very, very patient. Keep it really simple. Learn the basics of rod building first, um, spining the rod, all that good stuff. Make sure you're doing that right. Um, can somebody start a timer on their phone for three minutes for this epoxy? It's about how long it takes to mix. Actually, I can start when I got my phone right here. If it wants to work right. Stopwatch, start. All right, there we go. And when you're mixing the epoxy, you need to go really slow and fold it into itself. Um, that's going to minimize your air bubbles going into it. And that means you're going to have a really good finish at the end over your threads. So it's going to take about three minutes to mix this. Grab yourself a beer. Come on back. And while we watch this thing dry, I'll answer some more questions for you guys. Fishing related, doesn't matter if it's rod building or not, I don't care. I'll do what I can. Yeah, Rock, I'm not sure if you heard the part where I was talking about our blanks. Um, a lot of the custom rod builders in the country, particularly the ice builders, use a lot of our blanks, a lot of our guides, a lot of our handles. Um, we have some good stuff. There's a couple of the better known ones out there that uh, started out using our stuff and grew into more so definitely we were the starting point for a lot of guys so it was really cool you know working working with talking with these guys um just learning from all these other rod builders you know little things they do it's a good time that's why i love this business man getting to work and talk to guys um about all, everything you know fishing hunting rod building lure making which i've been thinking about doing a couple of those uh maybe do a uh a solder ice jig a little how to one night for you guys it's been a long time since i've done those though long time so that would probably be a shit show and a half watching me do that it's been so long forgot just about everything how to do other than just the basic premise of how to do it so And Rock, on, on my uh, YouTube channel here, um, go ahead and subscribe to it. Um, and then some of the playlists, we have some of our past seminars. Um, John Baccarell, the owner of Sports Direct, actually talked about some of the techniques uh, that he uses for building rods. He's been building, geez, what, 30, 40 years? I hate to age him that much, but at least that. If he's on, maybe he can say, hey, how many, time, how many years he's been building. But it's been a long time. So, so the epoxy is now totally cleared out. Um, doesn't look all milky and that. So that's telling me that this is well mixed now. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to start laying it down on the rod. So um, I like to use these disposal brushes. It's just easier. I don't worry about trying to clean them off afterwards. I'm going to set this underneath for any drippage that might happen. So, if you guys got any fishing questions, man, lay them on me. Um, salmon, pike, bass, I'll do whatever I can to try to answer them. If I know anything about the, what you asked, I will definitely try my best. Uh, ice fishing, open water, doesn't matter. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel... You probably know I love smallmouth fishing, spy baiting, drop shotting, all of my favorite things to do. Um, someone asked a little earlier about the motor that I'm using. It does work with every rod, open water, ice, doesn't matter, surf, trolling, use the same motor. Um, I think this is, 
I forget the RPMs on this one. Uh, a rotisserie motor if you want to make your own. You can you, you can definitely do. You can get the CRB one, which we carry on the website underneath the rod building. Um, you can use that guy. That's, that's what this one is. Uh, definitely like it. You can actually change the direction pretty easy if you wanted to. To kind of suit how you hold everything, and that's what I'm going to do. You can actually stop it, and it will actually reverse. I don't think that's what the design feature. I think it's just the way she is because of... It's a cheap DC kind of motor, so. And I just put the epoxy on. I kind of dab it on at first. Let gravity do a little bit of the work for me. Just to evenly coat it. I try not to get it up into the guide at all. If you get like a little bubble on the bottom of it, that's starting to droop. Just stick your brush underneath it. And just gently catch it. And you should be good. Okay, slide it up. Yeah, kayak rods are interesting. Um, some guys like long ones. Some guys are liking the old school actions and lengths now. You know, the five footers, the five sixes, the six foots uh, for it. You know, I get a lot of kayak guys in the store. Some of them like long rods, some of them like short rods. It's been interesting to kind of see how that niche... And fishing has really evolved um, since I was a teenager. Uh, Matt, I did not go to the Novi show. Um, with how busy the store was, I just didn't want to risk getting sick, man. Um, almost everybody that works those shows ends up with colds or strep or some weird something or something after being there in those shows and for me, going to those shows, it's it's half work, half pleasure, half seeing buddies um, like Brian Brosdale. You know, normally I go out and it's about the only time I ever get to see him and talk with him and his wife Heather because um, he's pretty busy just like me all year. Uh, I've known Bro a long time since I was a teenager uh, when he was with Clam. Uh, really good guy, honest. Um, one of one of the, one of the nice guys of the business. Um, it's not a close friend or anything like that. It's a, a more acquaintance, but we're still friends. Um, you know, he's all—he's always willing to talk to me, at least. So, out of Lake St. Clair, it would—I believe it was like six five, six ten, somewhere in that neighborhood. It was my biggest Lake St. Clair smallie. Um, that day, I caught a, a really high five and another six. It's actually pre-fishing for the Bassmaster North, North Open, where I was actually a co-angler. Um, and that was, for that bag, it would been a three-fish limit. And that bag alone would have kept me in the top 12 for two days if I would have caught that during the event. But, like it always happens for me in tournaments, I catch the snot out of them during practice, and never on the day that it matters. Just my luck. It's always been that way for ice fishing tournaments, too. Um, some guys had that luck, you know, where it just comes together on tournament day for them. But for me, it just never seems to work out. I'm sure one day it will. The fishing gods will give me what I always wanted, a tournament win of some kind. I don't even care if it's a little Thursday night beer league tournament. It'd be nice. Um, I'm not putting any pressure really on it. I'm letting the, the epoxy just kind of ride uh, between the brush, like the, just let the surface tension of the epoxy just make contact with the thread. Um, that's just the way I do it. I've always done it. And one thing too is you can make sure that you're not overbuilding, especially this Proco. 
let it rotate for a little bit if you start to see like a little sag bring the brush up and the brush will just kind of soak off the extra like this one's got just a little bit right there so um, and I'm gonna do the very end tip top here really quick that's a little bit tougher to do just because I have to slide this up and out of the way to do it while it's rotating so how many of you guys seen the spy baiting videos that I did the three-part series on the technique um, if you're a bass fisherman and you haven't tried spy baiting you are really missing out on just a deadly deadly open water smallmouth tactic um, it's also really really good on spotted bass and largemouth um, I've done really well with it a lot of guys overlook it for those species um, but more and more guys are figuring out that it is absolutely awesome so just gonna watch the epoxy here for a second make sure that I got it on even the way I want it and that is a finished rod guys um, not bad hour and 45 minutes all the talking um, normally I can build a rod you know ice rod in about an hour 45 minutes start to finish um, if I'm on my own working uh, but take your time if you get into this you want to try it um, be patient with the drying part it's gonna be the the longest part so I have a place where you can set it in your house where animals can't get up on it and mess with it at all um, but the other thing when you epoxy your thread um, the cup that you mixed it in make sure you save that actually set it in the exact same place where the rod is gonna be drying um, that's gonna let you basically know that the epoxy set up you actually are gonna test it in the cup never ever ever touch it on the rod you're gonna leave fingerprints if it's tacky and we don't want that we spent you know quite a bit of time trying to make sure this thing looks good uh, so we don't want to mess it up as it's drying um, then I'm gonna add a little more epoxy back here on the hook keeper <clears throat> by the looks of it I should build that up just a little bit And I just kind of let the epoxy flow and do its own thing. Kind of like Bob Ross, you know, just kind of happy little little epoxy ball. Just kind of let it tell you where, what, how much you need to put there. You definitely don't want to put too much. If it sags coming off the blank, you got too much with this medium build. It should look pretty even, like you don't have a big ball of it sagging below it, so... Um, there's not a hard and fast rule on, on, on guide spacing, Derek. Um, on ice rods and open water rods, you tend to see how I can explain this. It's um, basically from your handle to your first guide, that's going to be your biggest gap on the rod. And then from there, you slowly decrease it going up to the tip. But this blank I already had pre-marked. I've already built a bunch of this bunch of this exact rod up. Um, so I already knew where the guides are going to be. But normally, you'd want to take those guides in place. Grab a piece of string. Tape it to your handle when it's dry fit before it's all glued up. Thread it through the guides. And just load the blank. Look at how the curve is on the blank you want it to be a nice clean curve just like when this rod is bending without guides you want it to look the same way so you have to place it place the guides in such a way that you don't get any flat spots um, that's not good for the blank I don't it visually does not look good either um, one thing you can definitely tell when you look at guys that are building custom rods um, the guys that do it really, really well are not going to have those flat spots in there. Their guide spacing will be on point. Um, so there's not like a hard and fast rule. There's plenty of good uh, resources out there 
charts and like diagrams of rod spacing for different lengths and guide spacing different lengths. They're a good benchmark to kind of get you in a ballpark, but your eye is going to be the best judge of where those guides should go. So definitely just dry fit everything, put a string through them, load the rod. If you like how it looks, you like how the rod flexes. Uh, if you spine your rod right, the rod won't won't torque and rotate. If you do all that right, it doesn't matter what anybody else tells you. The guide spacing is, is what works best for you, what looks best to you. Um, as long as that curve is nice and smooth, you're golden. Anybody else got any other questions? Fishing in general? Have at her. Try my best to answer it. Yeah, Rock, man, post up pictures on my Facebook page of your rods if you're still here. I definitely want to see what you build up as you go. I, I love love seeing other guys' custom rod builds that they do for themselves. Um, you know, catching fish on stuff that you built is a really neat deal, um, no matter if it's a lure or a rod. Um, I wish I had the means to make my own reels sometimes, but that would be a very expensive process and... You basically need to be a watchmaker to kind of understand how to make all those little gears and function and, and workings. Um, it would be cool to do that, do one from the ground up, but not many people in the States do that anymore. As far as, you know, professional builders, there is none that I know of. So, yeah, rock, man. Hit, hit, up, my, hit up my uh, Facebook page. Um, should be a link on a bunch of my videos. Or if you go to outmichigan.com, um, there'll be a link at the top for my Facebook page. I got an Instagram too, man. Just just tag me, hashtag me, whatever. Um, hopefully, I'll run into it. Where on Lake St. Clair should I fish Sunday morning with no ice transportation? Well, John, how young are you feeling like right now, walking wise? You know, if it was me, I would probably go off a of metro, off the day sale. It's going to be busy. Every weekend has been busy this year. That is for sure. So. A little too much on the tip here. I know some guys like to wrap the tip top. I don't like to do that. I just glue it and not two miles young. So we're looking at three quarters of a mile one way. Because that's about what you need to do to get to the walleye grounds if you're looking for walleye. If you're looking for perch, you can definitely find some shallow. Um, you always got the canals. There's a couple little canal spots that um, I've had my eye on. So that I've been thinking about. Going to, and this is a good winter to get all the way over there and go check it out. Usually it doesn't have good ice, so I can't get there. Uh, water clarity up in Fairhaven. I haven't heard anybody complain about water clarity. Um, I've heard a guy say that, you know, there's, excuse me, there's a little bit of a stain to it, but still very, very fishable. I know up by Fairhaven, uh, a couple of the canals giving us some really nice northerns. Uh, perch are being caught, bluegills, crappie, they're all being caught as well, too, so. Yeah, Matt, I mean, just, the the fishing on St. Clair this year for through the ice is, honestly, it feels like Groundhog's Day, man. Like, over and over again, it's just really good fishing every day, just nonstop. Um, and that's not for, you know, guys aren't every day going out and just absolutely nailing limits, but they're doing really good. Um, the overall 
quality of the fishery right now is just outstanding. Um, I kind of felt like this was this was going to happen this year. Um, you know, being out in the lake in the summertime, seeing a school of smelt out by the firecracker in the center of the lake, which is a known place for just big smallies and walleye and muskie, and they're out there feeding on bugs, and nothing was molesting them or trying to eat them, and they're on the surface feeding, moving around. Uh, me and my buddy Rick literally casted at the school of smelt for a long time, just trying to get something fired up. Couldn't get anything. It's the first time in my life. I've ever seen a bait feeding frenzy on a surface with no predator fish underneath them going after them. It was pretty, pretty interesting to watch. So, uh, Rock, yeah, on, on my ice rods, I just run straight t Tennessee core candles. Um, it's just way better that way, I think. Sorry for the little lag there in the stream. Um, it's just the way that. I like doing it. The reason I don't like using real seats um, is that you have to worry about making sure that the guides are set lined up with it. When you use cork, you don't have to. You just put it on, um, and then you worry about lining up the reel once you go to get get the rod all rigged up. So I just like cork. It's warm to the touch. I don't like having graphite reel seats and all that stuff. Just too much weight to the rod. I like to keep the rods as light as possible. Um, if the stream's lagging, guys, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Probably some internet issues. Or I'm getting emails over here on my laptop. And it's lagging it. So I'm going to close that up. Let's get that fixed. Yeah. Just getting a little lag from stuff on my laptop being open. I need to get the wife to let me upgrade to 100 megs, man. Be a little bit better. Um, I've heard of a few, Matt. You know, just stragglers through the ice getting caught. Um, no real concrete information of where they're at. You know, if there's any concentration anywhere. Um, with guys getting out off the 400 club, depending on how deep you can get, there's a good chance you might run into some. Um, if you want to try bass through the ice, definitely do the same stuff you do for walleye. Uh, jigging wraps, jigging spoons, all that stuff is good to go, so... And rock the other thing too what's nice about cork um, get yourself a cork saw if you want to make some really cool cork handles um, mud hole has some CRB cork jigs but you can actually cut disc and checker patterns and everything in it um, if you don't want to get that into it um, you can head over to our website we do have some nice cork handles cork EVA hybrids cork cork align rings um, and we plan on expanding it even further to basically do a lot of the legwork and hard work of making custom cork handles for you. Um, and they're, they're really cool handles. This is just the uh, the Extreme Cork HWI. It's a 5.5 inch. Just our bread and butter basic grade A cork. So The Tungsten Jig of the Week. <laughs> We've had a lot of guys ask about that. Um... The game plan was to do one a week, all winter long, um, and it just got to the point where the stores were just so dang busy that John could not get away and go paint, you know, for you know six eight hours and get a whole bunch of them done for you guys. Um, it sucks. We definitely wanted to keep going on that and and. I think as things start to kind of come down or calm down going into February, he will start that back up again. And then uh, he might even do something with the walleye guys too in that regard this year. I'm not sure. Um, I know we're already starting to paint uh, jigs for walleye jigging season here. Um, that usually starts kicking off in March and we go through tens of thousands of jigs. So we really have to start doing that process now and yet the store is crazy crazy busy so we have a pretty pretty steep task of trying to get stuff ready for the different seasons for you guys um, but we do work our butts off for it um, I try my best to do what I can for John so he can focus on making stuff and I just help make sure that we get the product in that we need when we need it and that the stores are running as smoothly as possible for you guys um, it's really a team effort you know 
everybody there does more than one job. Um, a lot of us are putting in 12, 14 hour days right now, you know, three to five times a week even. Um, it's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's the best time of the year for us business wise. We love it, but it is definitely draining. It does take a lot out of us. Um, so we're glad you guys appreciate everything we do. And we just try to make sure you guys have cool stuff to go fish with all the time. And these lights are getting hot. Went to Harbor Freight and bought some lights so this is a little brighter, not this weird yellow glow in here. And they're actually getting very warm in here. They're high intensity LEDs. I got them mounted up on a shelf here. We're on a number three split rings. I did get some in um, Monday or Tuesday. So I'm unsure, were you in before that or after that? I know VMC has been lagging behind a little bit on it, and I haven't got my bulk terminal that I usually order uh, stocked up too well. Just the stuff I need for the uh, for the the ice season back in. I haven't did all the open water stuff yet, but I will start working on all that stuff here shortly. So I'll definitely get that all back in, John, if it's not back in already. You can always check on the website for the VMC stuff. I think I have the split rings on the website. If I don't, um, hopefully I'll get them up this, this summer and spring. I think I have like 75% of the store up on our website now. And that is a lot of stuff. It takes a lot of work to get that stuff up on the web. And I can only look at a computer screen and type and code for so long before I start losing my mind. So... It is coming up on 9 o'clock, guys, and I actually have some World of Tanks stuff to do uh, with the clan that I'm in. Um, I do do some online gaming as well, one of my hobbies. So, if there's no other questions, guys, we'll, we'll call it a night. Um, stay tuned for other live streams. It might be uh, the next rod building thing I'm going to do is going to be a, a split grip rod. Um, a few more steps doing that one. I've only done a handful of them. Um, I'm by no means an expert rod builder, but I know enough to be dangerous and help you guys get through that first initial step of learning the basics. Um, appreciate everybody stopping in and hanging with me for the two hours. Um, but yeah, tight lines, guys. Good luck on the ice. Be safe. And I will see you guys at the shop. See you later.